Right guys, let's do this. I am going to do a review of Edexcel paper number one for the higher tier. I don't know why I showed two fingers there. It's just paper number one. A lot of students came back from this exam and they were like five markers everywhere, left, right and center. Usually there's a couple of five markers at the end of a paper, but this one apparently it was everywhere. 17 questions. A lot of students didn't expect that. So this is something I'm going to be very interested to see. I spoke to a colleague of mine and he was saying how he teaches a set four group. And these are kids who are, you know, borderline four. Maybe some of them will be struggling to move from a three to a four. And for them, having so many five marker questions was a huge problem because with those five marker questions, if you get one thing wrong, then that's it you're not gonna be able to get the rest of the marks. Traditionally, that's how five marker questions work. Whether on this paper, and I'm gonna have a look at this, is anything like that, uh, remains to be seen. But those borderline students will struggle getting their grades and it probably made them nervous as well. I mean, if you're sitting in that exam and you open up this exam paper and you see all these five markers, you're gonna get nervous because you associate five marker questions with hard questions. So you're looking at every single question and it's like hard, hard, hard. So that's my initial uh, reaction to it, but let's actually see what the paper looks like because it might be better. So question number one, okay, HCF, that's straightforward, very robotic. Question two, probability uh, table there. Yeah, that's, that's all five marks, see, straight away, five marks, two parts, but five marks. But it looks all right. It looks good. I mean, look, if you do part A and you can't do part B of this question too, then that's all right. I mean, you could, you got the marks there. So hmm, not, I'm not seeing it so far. Right. Question three. Let me just move. On. Let me, let me quickly look through it. And if I see anything significant, I'm going to mention it to you guys. So. Oh, question six. Now this diagram might look a bit, oh, okay. What's going on here? Okay. But if you read on, it's not that bad, but it, it, you know, I, Turning that over, I'm talking about the middle set students. Now, set, you know, top set student guys, I know you guys would look at this thing. Oh, it was a breeze. And I hear from some of my students that it actually went well for them. But you have to, you know, take into consideration everybody, not just the brightest people in the country. So you guys just hold back. Let's see what else is there. All right. So question six looks a bit mm, at first, but. Right, question seven, a bit of algebra there, got some inequalities, two inequality questions. Yeah, I can see, you know, like the first algebra question on this kind of paper, I would have expected it to be like, expand this, factorize a quadratic, something like that. But this, yeah, I can see that might be quite challenging for some people. Right, question eight, similar shapes there. Yeah, that's all right, that's all right. But again, five markers. And the last question was six markers. Wow, six marks. Right, nine transformation. Yeah, that's all right. That's good. Right, let me just skip ahead. Okay, now we've got question 13. I'm looking at question 13. We've got two recurring numbers. And we have to find the value of x, y. Mm, interesting. So find those two fractions and multiply them, I guess. Yeah, that looks okay. How many marks was that? Five marks. See, everything's like five marks. Right, question 14. Nine balls. Okay, that one, yeah. Hmm, eagle number. Yeah, so this could be a bit of a challenge for some students. Others might just read it and think, okay, great, easy, pretty straightforward. Right, 16. Hmm, bit of rationalizing there. Okay, got that. That's okay, but again, so many marks. Seven, and that's it? Seven, oh yes, that was supposed to be. That's what I'm saying, it's like, it just stops, that's it. So what is this one? Um, oh, okay, the function looks a bit challenging, a bit more, you, you know, like your usual function questions, find the inverse, substitute this value in. It wasn't nothing like, you know, it wasn't anything like that. So how do I summarize this? I mean, like I said, for the foundation students who did this paper, they'll be like, you know what, did I secure enough marks because the number of questions that were on there, did I do enough to get my grade four or even grade five? Higher students who are at the top of the, um, you know, like set one, for them, I think it was not a bad paper. It was good. Challenging, but good nonetheless. You know, one thing that I was thinking about when I heard that 
there were 17 questions on the paper and lots of five markers, is you know how sometimes with these big five marker questions, you have to use several topics? It may not be like that throughout all these um, big five marker questions. You know, uh, the topics were, you know what you're doing. You kind of know what you're doing. Um, and, and if you've studied those topics, then I think that should be okay. Now, what happens from here, this point on? Whether you found the paper difficult, whether you found the paper um, easy, I mean, it's going to affect how you plan for papers two and three. And this is something that you really need to take away from this, is that your whole grade isn't just this paper. So if you did poorly on this paper, then there's still time to do better in papers uh, two and three and get more marks from there and, and work towards that. And uh, of course, if you've done really well on this paper and you thought that this was an easy paper, then just know that there's always challenges or challenging questions that come up in every exam year series. And this could be something that you should look forward to or, you know, preempt. And you can't really preempt these sort of questions anyway, because, you know, they're designed by somebody who hasn't shared that vision with you. So just just know your topics inside out. So keep uh, practicing, keep revising. Uh, any topics that have come up here now, you can kind of safely tick off. But I did mention in the um, initial assessment that I did that there are topics from particularly like algebra that like to come up again and again. Have we seen something like uh, factorizing quadratics? No, we haven't. Have we seen completing the square? No, we haven't. And I know that lots of people uh, would have been uh, preparing for this paper one uh, non-calculator doing tr exact trig values which hasn't come up so you might be disappointed with that um, so yeah uh, one st of my students did say that algebraic fractions came up now there was an algebraic fraction earlier but not the adding or multiplying or solving algebraic uh, fractions so something like that is you know things that you could uh, prepare for for papers two and three so let me know guys how you found this paper it might be good for you let me know in the comments and i'll see you in the next one bye for now